Hi guys, just a quick video to show you what I've done to fix a problem that I've been having on my SL1210 Mark II for the longest time. Um, essentially what's been happening is the pitch control was suspected to be faulty. So when the pitch was locked to zero, there was no issue at all. But the minute you start moving the pitch around, whether you're going towards the negative or positive, the plateau would just go crazy and you'd see the dots just go berserk. It was more evident when you move the pitch to minus eight. And this is after the turntable has been on for about 15 or 20 minutes. So as soon as it heats up a little bit, that's when the problem would present itself. So I'm gonna to cut to a video very quickly just to show you exactly the behavior of the platter um, and then I'll show you what I've done to fix it. Right, so what you're gonna to do to try and fix this is you're gonna take the platter off the turntable of course, you need to be 100% sure that you've unplugged the turntable. I mean, that goes without saying, but make sure that this is not plugged in. Right, so take the platter off. Then you're gonna take out the five screws that hold the dust cover in place. Pull that off, set it aside. You're gonna to get to the PCB. And then from the PCB, you're probably gonna have a cable tie around this cable. You're gonna to wanna to snip that off uh, in order to reveal this screw. So there's three screws that are holding the board together. One, two, three. Pull those screws off. You need to unplug this connector here, the pitch fader connector there, and your lamp connector, which is there. It's just those three cables. Pull those off. Then there's three screws that are holding this down so it's a little tight at first but uh, not unmanageable you can get to this just needs a little bit of force at first because i think this has got some loctite in there so take these three screws off once this comes off you should be able to lift the board over to the left side just be careful not to tug too much because you don't want to mess with these or yank it so that these come loose what we're actually looking for on this board is a resistor that's labeled R307. So let me try and get the camera in there, try and get this in there. This is the resistor that we're looking for, right there. R307, below TP24. Now, the original resistor that on this board from Techniques is a 2.7K ohm resistor. Now I found a post on a forum after weeks and weeks of research that depicted this exact problem. And there was a guy on there uh, by the name of SDS, so that's his forum username. And uh, he proposed a solution that actually fixed this issue permanently. Now, prior to me reading that forum post, my initial suspect was D301, which is right there. This is a little Zener diode. So this is a half watt or 500 milliwatt Zener diode. It's a very, very cheap component. I mean, you can buy this for a few cents. Same with that resistor. So the resistor, that I actually replaced it with is a 10K ohm resistor. It's a 250 milliwatt or quarter watt 10K ohm resistor, readily available at any electronic component shop. Um, you, you're bound to find this pretty easily. Um, not something that uh, most people don't carry. So get yourself a couple of them. Um, in South African cents, they're about 45 cents. I think that's about two American cents or a couple of pennies in, in UK pounds. But what you want to do is, 
once the board is flipped over, I'm obviously not going to do that now because I've done this once and even then I was a bit hesitant. But once you flip the board over, you're going to want to desolder R307 from the board. So once flipped over and desoldered, that resistor comes off. Stick in your new 10k ohm resistor, solder that together, and put the turntable back together. Um, and that'll be job done. I have never sold it in my life, um, but I watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to do it and I was able to sort it out, no problem. Uh, but by no means am I encouraging you to try that if you're not comfortable with electronics or taking things apart or even soldering. Um, if, if it's something that you're not comfortable doing or even confident doing, rather give it to a friend or somebody that actually knows how to do these kind of things but i can happily say since replacing that resistor it solved my problem um, you're going to get people telling you it's the pitch fader and that's what i was told and i had my doubts because i've, I've come across turntables um, with faulty pitch faders and the thing with faulty pitch faders generally is they you, you'll get that problem even at, at the zero point. You'll get a running pitch even at zero, if it's the pitch fader. There was no rhyme or reason as to why this was happening uh, once you move off the zero position. Uh, the forum post explained it perfectly in the sense that it had something to do with the way electronics work, and I am by no means an electronics expert, so I've got no idea um, how to reiterate half the stuff that I read on there but I made sense of what the guy was saying and uh, initially everybody was saying replace D301 which is that Zener diode um, and that was my first port of call so when I went out and bought those 10km resistors I actually did buy a whole bunch of those Zener diodes <clears throat> as well but uh, the advice on the forum was just leave that because if you replace that resistor, that will actually solve the problem. It's, it's actually a better fix because uh, it sends less noise or some, something to that effect. You'd have to go and read the forum post to actually know exactly what the guy was saying. I'm the wrong person to explain that to you. But what I can tell you is that that fix actually worked 100%. And I've been running this uh, on test in fact, after I, I, I applied the fix, I left it on for about 12 hours uh, and I came and checked on it and it was still performing famously. No issues at all. The pitch hasn't gone off once. Um, it's just been working perfectly. So saying that, and full disclaimer, this is not a tech channel. Um, I know my way around electronics, but I'm by no means an expert when it comes to these things. And like I said, if you're not comfortable doing this, rather give it to somebody that is. Um, but I can tell you, if this is the exact problem you're having, where when your pitch is at zero, you don't get this issue. Once you start moving the pitch around, the platter goes crazy. There's a 99.9% .9 chance that you're having the same problem. And it literally costs a couple of pennies to fix. Um, there's other posts that'll tell you that you can actually stick a heat sink on AN6680. I did test that theory as well, and I cut up a heat sink and stuck it on there just to see if that is actually the problem uh, in a way to troubleshoot this. And uh, it actually did work for about a half an hour. But obviously that wasn't a permanent fix, but it did prove that the pitch wasn't actually the problem, as in the pitch fader. That didn't need to be replaced. I actually did take the turntable apart, give the uh, pitch fader a good clean on the inside, just for the hell of it, just to, during the lockdown, I didn't have much of a choice. So I had to try and learn how to figure this out and, and do it. Um, and yeah, it, it worked out. So I hope this helps some of you out. And if you are having this problem, that's the way to fix it. Cheers.